peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll MMA podcast. I'm your host, Sky. That's your host, Jace. That's your host, CJ. And we are back after an amazing fight card. UFC 285 is now behind us. I feel like we waited so long for it to get there. And uh, we'll get into how I felt about the... <laughs> we'll get into how I felt about the card. Um, but... Yeah, let, let's let's get into it. Where y'all want to start? At the bottom, from the top, from the top to the bottom? Well, the first things first, I need to address my outfit. <laughs> Fans, the betting public, I've let you down. And for that, I'm sorry. And to get back in the mood, back in the character, I've come as Jace Off. A variation between Jace and Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> Pinky out. Oh, God. Sip slow. Sip slow. <laughs> Golf clap. Uh, okay, Jace off. Uh, now that you're here and Jace is somewhere else, probably in the shadow realms because he's lost so many times. Um, yeah. W- what do you guys want to want to get into it? Like, um, how do you guys feel overall about the car? Like, if you were to rate it, you know, one through five, five being the best, one being the worst. Uh, I think for me, it's it was about a three. Um, it, I don't think like when I think of like, I don't know if there were m- memorable fights really supposed to memorable m- moments, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. I'd probably give it about a three, a three as well. You know, out of one, out of ten, about a six and a half, a B. It was all right. It was cool for what it was. I I felt like, you know, when you want something to be so good and then you watch it and then you're like, oh, damn, okay. Mm. It's all right. (laughs) It could have been a lot better. It wasn't as exciting as I hoped it to be because from the top to the bottom, like we were saying last week, we were like, man, this card is fire. It's stacked. We're going to go. And then it just kind of was just like, all right, it's here. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. Like I remember like when I slept with Alicia Keys, I thought it'd be great. But it was just all right. It was just all right for me. <laughs> what a lie. Um, for me, I, I would go about like a 3.5. Like it wasn't the best card. Like like when I'm thinking the best card, I still think of last year's uh, card in Madison Square Garden with Izzy and Alex. Like every almost every fight was a finish. It was just a banger. Like it delivered the whole time. Um, this one, I mean, it had good fights. Like and there were there was a lot of finishes, but. It just didn't, the pace one wasn't like, doom, doom, doom. Like, that's what I'm used to. It was like, damn, like, people getting out of there. Um, I think some notable people uh, that I really thought that looked good was, uh, and Gary looked good, even though he got dropped. So he got a chin on him. Mm-hmm. The boys, what, what you got to say about that, Jace? Because you made, like, a little face. I mean, did he look good? I mean, I, he looks like a regular average ass fighter. You could be you could be average and still look good. You could I mean, be average and still look good. That's funny. Can you it? not? Like like he's not beating anyone in the top ten ever. Nor is he ever. fighting anybody right now in the top ten. We we don't know that. We don't know good what career he's gonna choice. progress into. We yeah, have no tell idea us, what he's gonna tell yeah, him, we have no tell idea him. what he's gonna progress into. Oh, like, he's Mr. Gandalf. That's why black <laughs> off. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I uh, could dig it. I definitely could dig it. Hey, what what's the guy's <laughs> name from Lord of the Rings that says you shall not pass? Gandalf. That's oh, it. Gandalf. Black okay. off. You know what? I was I was confusing you with uh what's the guy from Harry Potter, the big white Jeez. guy with the beard. Stop it. <laughs> You don't know the head master of no, Harry I can't Potter? Think of his name. Not right off the top of my head right now. Come on. So there's Gandalf the White, there's Gandalf the Gray, and then there's Jace off the Black. <laughs> Facts. Okay. How? Well, with that being said, I thought that he looked good. Um, what about you, CJ? Yeah, he, he had real good movement. He was he was smooth on his feet. Uh, he got dropped like you said, and then my man hits the the white man gritty coming down at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to Ian Gary man. He got a little bit of soul in him. Not a lot, but it's a little bit. You feel me? Just a little bit. <laughs> you know, he 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 want to be Connor so bad. Um, speaking of people, Cameron Samen. Semen? Cameron Samen. <laughs> no. 
he uh he's got to stop fouling people. Like yeah, that like fight was wild. okay, can we get to a point to where like can your <laughs> record or tendencies uh, follow you right? Because I was there in December at the last fight card that he was on, uh, where he fouled the guy and then ended up winning the fight. Same foul, nut shot. It, it was just egregious. This one he does it twice, mm-hmm. and an eye poke, mm-hmm. and it's just like. I know you may not be trying to do that, but like I think it would do some good to where it's like certain people who consistently are fouling people or grabbing the cage, doing shit like that. Like maybe we don't give you um, that that lean, lean, leniency, leniency of only doing it once. Because I was really sitting there thinking about it when I was watching this, and I was thinking to myself, if I'm a fighter, and I'm gonna start asking fighters, like if I'm a fighter, I'm down, I'm tired. Or I want to just take some air out of my opponent. I'm just going to foul them. I'm going to give them an eye poke because they're not taking points the very first time you poke somebody in the eye. You know, if I kick you in the nuts, they're not taking points. If they start taking points the first foul, I think we'd see a change in this happening. But, like, now it's like if if I'm a fighter and I want to just be a dirty fighter, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I'm going to kick you in the nuts. Oh, mm, it's going to be a hard one, too. And now, like, (laughs) you know, that's taking all your stamina out of you. So, uh, I think that's something that needs to be looked into. Yeah, he was, he, was, he, he was hitting them hard, too. Dude was almost out of there from those shots. <laughs> yeah. I think, though, unfortunately, it's just part of the game. You know, it you is. can't just take away one point because shit does happen. You know, it's a fight. So, it's not like uh, there's a direct way someone's supposed to go and or move. You know what I mean? And sometimes you just move and turn a certain way. I mean, I I <clears> – <throat> I'm an athlete, so being an athlete, um, I've played a variety of different sports and, you know, have excelled in a lot of different sports as well. And I've been hit my nuts numerous times, actually, albeit I'm sure not on purpose. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good story. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's interesting. I'll be interested to see his next fight to see if he fouls again <laughs> um, because at this point, it's just looking like a tendency to me, like kind of like DC with the eye pokes. I, I have to think, like, there's got to be one of the overseas places that will have action on it. Will he get deducted a point? Because you're two for two, my guy. You're two for two. Yeah, yeah. Um, Derek Brunson versus <laughs> Duke Pussy. I'm sorry, can you, can you say his name again? Do pussy. <laughs> I'm calling him do pussy. Listen, I, I, I need you guys to know I'm not a fan. I'm not a fucking fan of him. I did not like his comment about Africa and him being an African champion. And I wasn't going to get into it, but I decided that I am. Yeah, I'm going to get into it. So before I get into it, if you guys have anything to say about it, go ahead. So you saying you're not a fan of the White Panther? From White Conda, I'm not hey. calling him. Hey, hey, my, hey, we've been going off on TikTok on my lives, bro. We've been. Oh, yeah. That's the White Panther. He bringing it back to the motherland. No, no, we are not doing that. We are not doing that. You want to know why? The White gonna... Panther is wild. I'm gonna tell you why I don't have no respect. After Jace, did you have anything to say about it? Um, bro, I would crazy. comment, but you might disown me, and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. He's more African than me. Hey, me too. <laughs> um, well, African. yeah, te- technically, you know, he's born it's not, there, but it's I- not technically. He is. I mean, no, know. it is technically. He was born in Africa, so he is African, but he's has no African blood in him. That's just a fucking fact. I'm not gonna get into it. I'm not gonna get into that aspect. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because. All people, you know, but at the same time, um, him talking about did those belts go back to Africa? Each and every one of those belts went back to Africa. Each and every one of the champions, Kamaru, Israel, and um, what's the big dude? and Ganu, <laughs> they all took their belts back to where they came from, right? They all went down the street, showed it to people, let them touch it, blah, 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 blah. This motherfucker grew up in South Africa. Are we going to act like South Africa is the same as Nigeria and Cameroon? Are we going to act like that? Because it's not. So the fact that their parents had to leave the countries to go somewhere and get better opportunities for their families is ridiculous that you're sitting down there in South Africa as a white man that has benefited from apartheid to talk about being an African and how they're not real Africans and you're the only African champ. Fucking ridiculous. 
that's all I, I'm not even, I'm, I don't want to go too deep inside of it because I can feel myself getting annoyed. But that's, that's, it's just ridiculous. Like you're sitting up there on privilege talking about that you're the African champ because their families had to leave so they could have something better. Why don't you go live in Nigeria? Why don't you go live where they live? And then tell me about being, breathing the African air and working out and still living there. Fuck out of here. On to Cody. <laughs> <Lincoln>. <laughs> Drop Hot the mic. Take. Drop the mic. Hey, drop Hot the take. mic. Oh, drop the mic. On, on, a, on, a, on a quick side note, um, besides those, you know, uh, talk, I enjoy him as a fighter. I find him wildly entertaining. Uh, the guy gives everything he has. For, like, he reminds me of my stroke game. He gives it everything he has for the two minutes that he's got. Then after that, he's just trying to catch his breath. And I can rem- I, I can relate to that on a personal, personal level. That's that's accurate. That's his game. That's his game to a T. It's great. It and is- you know what you're going to get with him. You know that this guy's going to try to push forward, going to try to knock the dude out. And then he's going to try to catch his breath all in the same breath. 185 must be trash. It very is because he's what five or six right now. <laughs> I yeah, was looking like, at it earlier. I'm like, God, that's like, horrible. <laughs> this man that just gasses out. You know what Israel Adesanya does to him? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Pieces him into like obliterates him. Shit, Robert Whitaker. Robert Whitaker knocks his head off. Like, like he's not even. And that's this is- wild, right? He's top five. Yeah. <laughs> does, does he not deserve to be? Uh, sure, Panther. he he beat number five. He deserves to be number five. That's why I said one eighty five is trash. Yeah, who's in front of him? Um, well, they moved him to six, but you know, six, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It, it don't matter. <laughs> yeah, five, six, same. Mm-hmm. Um, ahead of him, Jared Cannonier, Marvin Vittori, Paula Costa. Does he even? Does he even <laughs> fight in the UFC? That so looks trash. It's so trash. <laughs> he even fighting in the UFC? Like. <laughs> Like, okay, right after this fight happened, Jace texts me and he's like, oh man, is that fight of the night? And I'm like, I'm not one of those people that see people gas out and think that that means it's fight of the night. Like, they were just two tired motherfuckers in the second round at that. You know, Derek Brunson's coach (laughs) had to throw in the goddamn towel. Speaking of that, Derek Brunson, like, RIP, my man's got to go. He got to retire. He got to go. I, I thought for sure it was fight of the night still. No. <laughs> Where was the skill? The actual skill. Yes. Be tripping. This Where? Suck. And that, I hate to say fighters suck, but they, that look horrible. Oh, that looks look fantastic. I that look like that. Weekend at Bernie's or something. That look like me. That look like me. Like, I love seeing people throw it all out on the line until literally they're trying to... Okay, boom. Okay, boom. Take it back with everything they got, every breath that they got. I should, I, I love it. Can't get enough. I mean, sure, somewhere else, but not in the UFC. Now, when we're talking about the top 10, top five athletes, that's not what I want to see from my top guys. I want to see well conditioned, skillful tacticians inside of there. I don't want to see like uh, Robert or Luke Rockhold versus Paula Costa with your fucking hands on your knees. Like, that's embarrassing. These embarrassing guys didn't have that. Sport. It's embarrassing for the sport. When have you ever seen like a, a boxer go and go, oh, no, no, come on. Exhaustion, every fighter's worst nightmare. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, it, but it definitely was a brawl. Uh, Cody Garbrandt gets the win. Got a little scared there at the end. Got a little clipped. <laughs> he got clipped a little bit. But they said, uh, what they say that he has a nerve injury neck. in his neck? Yeah, like a herniated disc in his neck or something. Yeah, that's tough. But it's probably good for him. If it, if it means he has to take a little bit more time, he's got to keep just, he's, he's 31. He's still young. The longer he has to let his brain or whatever the hell is going on with that heal up, what y'all think about his performance? That fight was boring as hell. It was boring as hell. He was, he was hey, but he was in there moving and grooving. But other than that, you could, hey, he was dropping it, popping it. <laughs> but I don't, I was just like, damn, can we fight a little bit, guys? And I know he's super conscious because he don't want to get put to sleep again. But this, come on, yeah, yeah, that's all. Oh. I get. Like Jace was saying earlier, it was like, bro, 
it was this mid. Like, get out of here. Yeah. In the words of uh, Dana White, just referring to that fight, like, you know, I zoned out and he was in the third round. I was like, oh, shit. We're in the third round. And I was at a pack bar where, you know, with probably about two to three hundred other fight fans. It was like I was watching it, but I really wasn't like I'm looking at the screen and I was just like, what what's going on right here? Minus him, like I said, dropping it and dancing. Nothing really, really was going on in that fight. So Mm -mm. and Trevin Giles, he's going to get cut. That was his fourth loss in a row. He never took off. He never got in his own bag. He he didn't do anything, which is, you know, Safe Saud is my favorite coach. Um, that's his coach as well. And yeah, Safe was super frustrated with him. Oh, and real quick, before we go past Amanda Rebus, she did her damn thing. Amanda Rebus came inside there and beat the shit out of uh, Arujo. Yeah, that was a real good fight. I like that <laughs> fight a lot. That was probably one of the fight of the nights right there. That was a very good fight. My fight of the night is coming up. But yeah, like she went out there and, and did her thing. Like she was out, she was beating that girl up. Um, and then Bo Nickel, he's arrived. Your boy has arrived. Are you guys uh into the nut shot thing or you think it was a clean fight? What you think, Jace? Have you heard about it? Um yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think it kind of happens. Um, I'm kind of the. Uh, I hate to be the contrarian, or shall I say the the realist on this show. Um, you know, suppose the the pipe dreamers over there. I, I I don't know about the Bo Nickel hype train. You know what I mean? I'm really interested to see um, some more of a stand up. You know, when he starts facing actual guys. Um, and Jamie Pickett did defend it for a second, you know, where he just didn't take someone up and down and be able to drop it like it's hot. I'm really interested to see him going against someone who has like real high level takedown defense or someone who has like top of the food chain jujitsu. Like, I'd be very interested to see him, um, kind of a step up in competition, you know, yeah. for him to call out certain people a little bit disrespectful, thinking you're just gonna walk through them. I like the confidence for sure. But, you know, you really think you're just going to get in there and just maul Izzy? Mm, I don't know about that dog. I don't know about that dog. Yeah, I, I feel the same way as you, Jace. It's like I'm excited to see where he's going to go. I'm, I'm not going to throw him away like that. But uh, somebody was on TikTok was like, bro's been in the, the octagon for probably a total of, what, three minutes of all together of fight time. And we just need a little bit more. And I'm not going to throw him to the side. I just We just need to see a lot more of him to see what he could do, be in a scrap a little bit, even if he wins or loses, just to see where he's at. Even if he loses, uh, I want to see how he can bounce back from that. Like, And he has a lot of potential. He just needs to learn some more. But I ho- hopefully they don't push him on that hype train too damn fast because it's like he needs more time in the in the cage, man. That experience means a lot. <laughs> For sure. Um, I am a Bo Nickel fan, specifically because um, Danny used to play football with his mom. His mom is also a boxer, football player. She's an athlete. Um, If we take a look at, uh, these aren't the UFC rankings, and I know it might be hard for you guys to see it, so I'll go ahead and uh, just talk about what I'm seeing. But So he just fought Jamie Pickett, who... You know, the UFC only shows outside of the 15. They need to take Darren Chill off of this because he's no longer with the UFC. Saranara, um, like I've been saying for the last time, like he needs to go somewhere. Uh, but let me see where Jamie Pickett is on like this top 50 list that they have here. I don't even... Um... So they got him at 52. So ahead of him is quite a few uh, people. I think the last time that I looked at this list, like when Bo had first made his Contender Series debut... Jimmy Pinkett was closer to like 30, but, you know, obviously things have uh, shuffled. Um, Just looking at this list of people, like, because you don't want to just feed them to the top 15, like you guys were saying, like, who would you guys think would be cool to see him up against? So, like, I'm looking at this list. They might feed him to Julian Marquez. Julian Marquez just lost on the same card. You know, they like to build a fighter up like that and, like, give him somebody that's coming off of losses. Um I wonder, they got Chitty on here. Y'all know who Chitty is? The real, mm-hmm. real black brother? Mm-hmm. 
Phil Hobbs, power. that would be exciting. That would be exciting. That's a good one. See, people be as I'm sorry to cut you guys off and talk about TikTok and shit. I go yeah. live. It's like I don't have a list of names of people, but if mm -hmm. I can see it, then I could be like, oh, that does yeah. sound like a good fight. Phil Hawes. I would have never thought of just Phil Hawes off exactly. the top of my head. <laughs> yeah. When you get a chance, check out rankingmma.com. And that will show like the top 50, top 75 of all the different divisions. So you can see these different people and like really start thinking about it. Um, Andre Pe Andre Petrovsky, who's coming off of the Ultimate, the Ultimate Fighter, Fighter. That, that would be a good be a fight. Good He's a wrestler. Um, and, and also on this site, it shows you like their last three fights. So as you can see here, like Andre is on a three fight winning streak. He's not in the top 50, but you know, it just gives you a chance to like get a different look at these people. If you really wanted to, you could put them up against Buckley. Like, you know, so check yeah. out this site and, uh, we could just start thinking about like different people we'd like to see him, uh, fight up against. I think for sure, if they want to break them into the top 15, put him up against Brad Tavares. Uh, Brad is kind of like that gatekeeper at 185. You know what I mean? Like, Brad's if you can tough. get past Brad. Brad's a dog. Yeah. Brad's tough. Yeah. I mean, up, up until the Gaslam fight, I mean, that was Izzy's hardest fight. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. You're right. Um, I was just about to say that. Somebody so, yeah. said, like, someone like Jacob uh, Malcolm. Yeah, Jacob you know Malcolm. I seen him yeah. on there. He'd be good. Mm -hmm. He's a wrestler style. I think, I think yeah. Bo gets through him, though. Yeah. But we just need to see him be in a fight, not you know a minute and then gone, another minute and then gone. Just get in some action, some some get yeah. some minutes in the cage a little yeah, bit. You know, we so, need to see that chin get checked at yeah. least once. So yeah. so let me ask you this: Do you all want him in a fight, or do you just want to see him face adversity? I would like to see him face adversity. Mm. I want to see yeah. him be in a fight, even if he's in there dominating for three rounds i just need some ring time some ring time even if he's just out there out wrestling people it's it's fine you know he's just coming in and it's not his fault that he's beating these people <laughs> within a minute but just a little bit more time so we can get a sample size of how he moves around in there a little bit more because well, if you see oh go ahead Scott. go ahead no, one thing to know if you don't have enough tape on me you don't know what i'm gonna bring out so if i'm mm. running through the competition I'm, I'm finishing everybody in the first round you don't have no tape on me you don't know what i'm gonna do so you can't game plan for what you can't what you don't know facts was that your puberty voice or what <laughs> 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 so, uh, uh, but then uh, getting into Gamrot versus Jalen Turner, uh, this is one of those fights where I could really spend too much time on it. Basically, I'm gonna make <coughs> say my little piece. We need to get clear about judging. Judging needs to get real clear because it's getting frustrating. Either mm -hmm. control, either damage matters or control time matters. You guys need to tell us what it is. So that we are all on the same page because this is a classic example of damage versus control. Jalen did far more damage, knocked him down. And I think at least every round or at least um, in two of the rounds, the first two, for sure, you know, was piecing him apart, had him, had him literally running in the fucking octagon. And all Gamrod did was control him on top. Yeah. I, I don't hey, know what we're judging. How you feel, what do you think about that one? It was a, it was uh, a pretty good fight. So I, I, yeah, I guess for me, like I enjoy, like I really enjoyed that fight because it was that classic wrestler versus striker. Shall I say grappler versus striker? You know, um, back and forth. Um, me and Sky, we both agreed that we thought Jalen won, um, but I think, and at least I've watched the fight back. I still don't feel like having Gamera one was robbery. Uh, I'm not like I don't think it's egregious, but I thought that Turner got it done and he really impressed the fuck out of me. So, you That's know, it's kind of like that thing sometimes where sometimes you you don't uh, win the decision, but uh, you win the fight, you know, and I think that a lot of people like Jalen Turner for me actually just got more scary because yeah. Gamron is such a dominant, dominant fucking wet blanket. And Turner, and I think so, passed the test. You, yeah, a thousand percent. I I haven't watched the fight back, so I just seen from from that night. And then I think like uh, we're conditioned to have control, uh, take more president now. You know, if you just holding them up, taking them down, 
Uh, but like you were saying, Jace, he, he, I think you're right. He passed the test. His striking was A1. He was popping his ass up, tearing him up. Kicks was doing good. Jabbing him up, hard, like hard, too. He got take, he got taken down. He was getting back up. He wasn't staying down. So like you were saying, so I think he passed the test. 6'3", big, athletic, and his grappling is getting a little bit better, too. Uh, Garamond's one of those top grapplers, man, and, and he's one of those wet blankets, and he's relentless. He's gonna be on those legs, and he's gonna be trying to take you down and keep going for you. Frustrating type of fighter, you know. It's hard for those pretty fighters that's long and at a distance, and he crowds your space. But Jalen did very well. He did very well. He impressed me. Like you said, he's gonna be a problem. He's gonna be a problem. Yeah, six three and can move super crazy yeah. at that like yeah. at that at that weight. Yeah, and and my thing is it's just. Just tell us what we're judging. Tell us if, if, if we're judging control time, I'm fine with that. If we're judging damage, I'm fine with that too. But it has to be consistent. It can't just be a free for all. Jalen looked great. Um, yeah, I, like Jay said, like I didn't think it was a robbery. It was a close fight. I felt like Jalen did enough. Um, mm -hmm. But um, yeah, you know, we'll see. Well, I actually think MMA judging is extremely consistent. And screwing, yes? As in extremely inconsistent, being consistent. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Yeah. Uh, You're right, uh, though, because sometimes a grappler would, won't win those. And the person who was striking more wins the fight. And then you flip it around, and you, then you're like, what the hell? What are we watching, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, it, 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 and it doesn't even make sense as fans for us to even have arguments anymore because it's going by case by case, judge by judge basis. You know what I mean? Because, like I said, we can look at the Nganu versus Gon fight, and I say Gon won. He did more damage, and Francis literally threw eight fucking punches on the ground, period. <laughs> Out of eight minute control time, he threw eight punches in a whole <sighs> damn fight on the ground and landed three. And people were like, oh my God. Like, that's not damage. You did not win to me. But it is what it is. Um, as long as we could just get clear about what are we judging, like what are the actual rules, that would be great. And then my my fight of the night, G off nail versus Shavkok Rockmanov. Rockmanov. Woo! Very, Woo very that was a that was a great fight, real good fight. That was a high level type of fight, you know. They both were going at it. And it sucks that Jeff missed weight though. It did, but but he still got paid. They yep, still gave yep. him the fight of the night bonus, yep. which yep. Has, hasn't happened before. Yep. Yeah, but they also still docked his paycheck, and as they should. And I think it's weird that we say it sucks for Jeff. Like, he made a conscious choice to sign at a contractual weight, and then he didn't make that for X, Y, and Z. No, I mean that it sucks that he missed weight. Like, he should have came in at his uh, weight. You know, you. I, wish he, I wish he was on point with that shit. Got because you. then it kind of takes away from, you know, he got his... The, how well he did but in losing <laughs> if that sounds anyway but you get what i'm saying like 100 wish you would have came in on point that's what i mean for a black man <laughs> <laughs> shameless plug yes sir you know, yes sir. uh i think it's funny that jace is over here talking about contractual agreements and contractually blah 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 because when i say the same thing about fighter pay and i say well you contractually sign to make x amount of money don't start crying now you you're, you refute that all the time, but you know it is what it is. Hey, your worth goes up. Let's get to it though. Hey, then sign a new contract. They don't be wanting to. Oh, then go somewhere else. If they let me out the contract, they would. Yeah, fight <laughs> it out. People, I mean, the UFC notorious for not letting people out of the contracts. Dana well, White's Paul been Acosta. Dana White's been talking bullshit. Oh, you know, if you don't, if you don't want to fight here, then you can just go. Well, that's not fucking true because the well, Diaz brothers have been held hostage. GSP's been held hostage. Randy Couture's been held hostage. Uh, can we talk about the people that have been let go recently? Because a lot of fighters who have asked for their way out have gotten it. Jose Aldo got it. Darren Till got it. Marlon Marais got it. Name um, one that was on a winning streak. It definitely wasn't. Um, Nate Diaz wasn't on no damn winning streak. He was on three fight lo win losing streak. That's what I'm saying. Name one who asked and got their release. He didn't, but he didn't. He had to fight it out. Streak. You just said the Diaz brothers. He yeah, had to fight it out. I'm saying that they were held hostage. Exactly what I'm saying. And you were saying, well, like they do let people go. I'm like, no, they don't. But right, N but no, I'm saying. 
that they have been recently, they have been letting more fighters go when they're asking for it. I think it depends on your relationship with the UFC. Um, and I think a lot of times it really depends on like how valuable you are to the company. Like if you're fucking Joe Schmo down at the bottom, yeah, sure. They'll quietly release your ass. Cause who the fuck are you? When it comes to Nate Diaz, they were trying to make that counter fight. Yeah. They held him hostage. hundred percent. They was not about to let that. They was not trying to let him go for nothing. They was like, all right, you want to go? You got to go through death row. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, but I don't even know how we got here. Oh, cause I brought it up about the contract thing, but Shavkat is the deal. He's the real deal. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm ready for him to fight for the title. So you didn't want Hamzat to fight for the title, but you want Shavkat to. Well, you talk about someone who's actually what he's got seven or eight UFC fights now. I don't think so. Let me pull it up though. Where Cumshot had like four, three. So <laughs> how are you just gonna have be nonchalant about a cum shot? Come on now. He he's uh he literally just fought his fifth fight and you want him to fight. Five the fights. The exact same thing as Hamzat. Five fights, five finishes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's time. At 170. Let's 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 go. Come on. I don't know why you're hating on my boy. Who? Uh, Hamza. What's Shaf count Shaf caught uh rank right now? Uh where's let's he, see where's he at? what they updated him to. He's currently ranked six. He moved up three. Oh, nice, nice. So Gilbert. Nice. Gilbert, Bilal, Hamza, and Kobe are ahead of him. Let him fight Kobe. <laughs> hey, no, they need Let's to do a someone fight Kobe. must go. They need to do it. Kobe ain't gonna fight nobody. Nobody. <laughs> that man is squatting. He's squatting yeah, on the position. She said Kobe is a fucking nobody. egg. Put some respect He's on his name. He's egg at this point. Put some oh, respect what? on his name. He's a Put some sucker. Respect on his name. That's the same man that He's ran that out the ring. Stop it. Listen, when you run out the ring, you, that you, you can't be. You can't He's be. He's a sucker. <laughs> you can't be. Oh, He's that dude. Boy. Uh, yeah, I Gotta thought that. Uh, yeah, I thought that was the best fight uh, of the night. Uh, Geoff versus Shavkat. Geoff showed a lot, and you know, once again, safe Saud in the corner. Like, hey, you want to win this fight? You gonna have to really work. Um, yeah. So I, I thought that it was a great fight. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Yeah, I love that we'll fight. See. That was a great fight. Great fight. Great fight. So what what happens next with Jeff? Where do you think he goes? Who? Uh, Jeff didn't lose nothing after that fight. He Who? lost the fight. G off. <laughs> um, he didn't oh, lose okay. nothing Sorry, after I didn't. that fight. <laughs> so he's gonna he's now ranked number eight. I do him against Sean Brady. Sean Brady's number nine. Or Vicente Luque. No, he already beat up Vicente. He, he already man. He styled on Luque. He already His beat up. Was crazy against him. Who's Michael Chiesa fighting next? Uh, the Leech. Michael Chiesa fighting the Leech. The oh, Leech. Okay. The oh, flyest motherfucker Della in Mella. the UFC. Hey, they got Jack in the top fifteen now. He's number fourteen. Hey, do Jack versus Gio? Makes sense. That would be smooth too. That makes sense. <laughs> that would be smooth. Nasty. Yeah, I like that. I like that too. That box would be crazy in there. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, tell him, Sky. Go tell Dana. Book yeah. that shit. Book it, bitch. <laughs> Run, it. Run it. I like that. Uh, yeah, but um, let's let's go ahead and get into it. I haven't had opportunity to talk to CJ yet. Really talk to you about it. So, how's the house feeling? How y'all feeling, House Chevchenko? We can hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. CJ, may I? You want to go for? Go ahead, bro. Viva la Mexico! Hey, All there's no lie in there. There's no lies. There's Viva Is Mexico. No. Really? Yes, this Viva Mexico. Yeah, because y'all in the wrong side of the border. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jace froze. You froze, Jace? I think he froze. I I I I, I need to. Nah, I'm just thinking that I need. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Definitely, definitely, definitely. Oh man, it's not Viva. Okay, all right. <laughs> nah, it's just Viva Mexico. Viva and it's Mexico. a it's a Hico. <laughs> Mexico, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Um Jace was actually excited for the Mexican this time. Nice. For once. 
because he knew what happened the last two times. He was tripping. Yeah. I told him last time. Mm-hmm. Mexico now has three champions. Well, um, Yair is interim. I don't we take know. it though. We take it. I don't give a yeah. fuck what nobody said. We taking that shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but her being Valentina, that's the real deal. Holyfield, she took out the, the that like the second best fight female fighter in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 let me say, she looked damn good from the start of the fight. She was hurting Valentina. She was piecing her up. I had it. Jason and I had it two one Grosso. We gave. Grosso round one and Grosso round three. Correct. Um, the so go, judges. Oh, go ahead. Y'all gonna judges, think I'm a bias and shit. I had it the other way. That, that's how the judges had it. Three one. But the thing is, one because I literally just watched the fight again today because I knew it was coming on. First, and I turned the volume down because they was tripping. I'm like, shut up, y'all. Um, the first round, super, super, super close. They both had great moments and stuff. I'm I'm sorry if I'm cutting you off, Sky, but I just wanted to get that point off too. And then uh the third round, it was the same thing, very close. Um, and I've been hearing that a lot too. Oh, uh, she was piecing her up, piecing her up. I was like, bro, the 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 it was very, very equal in the striking to me, rewatching it and then turning the volume down. So when uh Alexa was coming in with her combos. Uh, Valentina was countering and coming out with her leg kicks and stuff. And then she started peppering with a jab that was crazy. But at the end of the day, it all means nothing because it's the definitive, definitive, definitive win. And, okay, go ahead, Sky, so then we can come back around <laughs> to me. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I thought the third round was close, and I knew that it could have went either way as well. Mm -hmm. The judges did end up giving it to Shevchenko. So Shevchenko was up 2-1 to one going into the fourth round where uh, Grosso finished her. Um, but I felt like, for me, when I was watching it, I haven't had a chance to watch it back again. Um, I just felt like... I felt like Grosso looked really good. I felt like she looked better than what I thought she was going to... Like, I've always loved her boxing. From the very first time I seen her, I was like, oh, I, start, I started watching all her fights because I was like, oh, shit, like, she has hands. Um, but I didn't think she was going to be able to really touch Shevchenko like that cause, because Shevchenko's up here to me. Like, like... She's that person, especially when it comes to striking she, and her Muay Thai, like, it's just so nasty. So to see her actually getting clipped was like, oh, wait a minute. Like, Grosso is here to fight. Like, she's not playing with y'all. Um, And I was absolutely excited. I lost my mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got some well, jokes? I don't want to. No, y'all are good. I totally yeah. agree with everything y'all said. Yeah. But, so, so, uh, rewatching the fight again, like I said, uh, Unbiased, so and I love them both. So shout out, bro, Viva Mexico. That's three punk mother. <laughs> but there's something about it. I was what when we were watching the fight the first time. It was it was like watching Brandon again. You know what I'm saying? So there was something about having the will to win. There was something about the will to win. She had it just a little bit more than Valentina at that time. When mm -hmm. she been when Valentina got her down in the second round. And she took her down, clean takedown, was working her and all of that. She continued to move. She continued to move. She continued to move. It was the will. She was like, I'm not going to stay here. Mm -hmm. You know, most people get in that position and they just kind of just accept it. She fought through all of that, got back up. She was in a crucifix for a little bit, got out of there, worked out of that. You know, she got taken down. And the thing, we were watching me and Mo again. We were like, why was Herzog standing them up? They were both doing work in the middle oh, of that stand up. Was that Valentina, the fight that, that got stood up? Yeah. Yeah. That was in no the reason. third okay. round. And the thing third is, round, okay. Grosso was doing work from the bottom. Valentina was doing work from the top. And they were not even in the um uh on the ground for that long for them to from him to stand them up. So I was like, what are you doing at this point in time? Like I've seen a lot of more people just laying and praying, not even transitioning into positions or not, not get stood up. So I was like, what the fuck are you doing? I think let them work. Ju just real quick. Um, I think somebody, I think somebody talked to somebody, talked to the officials in the back and was like, hey, because they did that in the Gamrot fight too with Jalen. And it was like that, even though Gamrot was still working in that position, he wasn't doing much, but he was still working like and 
Like, I don't know. I feel like they were standing people up a lot yes, uh, at, the, at the last fights, and they probably should have just let people just, you know, just let them do their thing. Um, I was shocked by that, too. Yeah, And I know that, um, sorry, I was just going to say, I know that it's an extremely unpopular opinion, but I don't believe that they should ever stand up a fighter. I agree. Get up. Get up on your own. Doesn't make for a good fight. I don't want to watch it. It is not aesthetically pleasing, but hey, if you can't stop this grown ass man from dry humping you, nigga, like what's going to happen in prison? Listen. Um, Just saying. What I will say, like, yeah, because, like, after, like, being in jujitsu and, like, having, like, my instructor just sit there and hold me down, he's much smaller than I am. Like, and you can't get up, it's a wrap. Like, it's a wrap. Like, um, but yeah, shout out to Alexa Grasso. Shout out yes, to yes, Valentina yes. Shevchenko. They're definitely gonna run it back. Mm-hmm. You know, they're definitely and gonna that, run that fight back. And that's the thing. It was like, like what we always say. It was it's all good till it ain't. <laughs> so how many times all our all our fighters that we've been loving is like, damn, you get into a point. You know, you had it one way, I had it one way, but it's like, you know, in my eyes, if you continue, you're winning the fight, and then you slip up. Fuck, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's. And that's I'm sorry I go I hate going back to TikTok because everybody don't be on that shit. Everybody likes to use words. Get on it, Jace. You do amazing on there, bro. Because yeah, there's a would. lot of people that be wild just like you. <laughs> but a lot of people say words that there's no chance. There's no chance. There's no chance. There's always a fucking chance, y'all. And y'all always remember that shit. If there's, if there's time on the clock, you can get rocked. <laughs> hey, I love it. If it's time on the clock, you can get rocked. You know Shout out to Kamar Usman. <laughs> Don't do my speaking of like him. That. We got two weeks. We got two, we got two weeks. weeks. Like really, like okay. But real quick, I do want to say, like, if y'all been watching the pod, like CJ has really hammered that home for me. Because in the beginning. I used to be like, "There's no way. There's no way." He was like, "Man, we don't know. We don't know." And now I've adopted it. I'm like, anybody can win. Anybody, anybody. can win. Doesn't matter who, how, what's going on. Like anybody can win. Um, our champions are falling back when Amanda Nunez lost. Jason, and I got on the phone and was like, nobody's safe. It's the, nobody. She was the start of it, safe. huh? She was the start. She was after that. It's like, boom, 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 boom. Kamaru It's like, nobody is safe. This is like a game. This is like, um, the walking game dead episodes. You don't know who <laughs> they're going to kill off game of Thrones. All of them. Like, you don't know who they're going to kill off. Like now, do we think Shevchenko can come back and grab it? I think she's going to come back vicious and mean. I think she's going to come back. Oh, I think she's going to come back and dry hump her. Hey, yeah. do what you got to do. Because the wrestling, was, the wrestling was A1. And that's the thing. Like I And I hate arguing with people on TikTok because they've been trying to like bag on her. You know how people just throw people away just because there's a yes. loss in there? Yes. It's like, they're like, she can't grapple this. I'm like, did you not see what she did to Andrade? She big dogged her. <laughs> you didn't see what she was doing to Jennifer I, Maya? Some yes, big Same dog her. Jennifer, throw her down, yeah. got her out of there. Like, and like what yeah. we were saying, like a long time podcast ago. Once you get that belt and you defend it and defend it and defend it, you're going against killers every single time. That's coming with their best. They may not. Grasso was at number six. She may not have been number one, but she coming for that shit though. Yeah, she. All of them are coming for it, and they not playing. They're they don't not have playing. nothing to lose. Facts. What are you gonna lose? Still, and that's it. I was telling Mo too. It was like I'm kind of happy Grosso did win it. I wanted to see Valentina put her finish her last of the rubies. Um, but because if Grosso probably would have lost that, does she get another shot anytime soon? No, nope. not no time soon. So nope. once the champ, always a champ. I say that shit too. Shit. Yeah. And period. Uh, Valentina was one of the longest. Active because Kamaru fell off, Izzy fell off, so she was the last one. So now everybody's getting a chance, and it mm-hmm. shakes up the division and it it's lets you now. realize that like these people are human beings. Like we don't like these people are humans. Like at any point in time, anything can happen. Uh, one thing that I did want to point out a couple weeks ago, the week of the fight, I put out a video that was saying that nobody in the women's flyweight division had ever oh, won yeah. a championship by submission. So Alexa Grasso was the first one to do that. That's absolutely amazing. So now we just need featherweight. Can we get like a featherweight submission in there and go ahead and finish that? Can we get uh <clears throat> can we get Yair to finish off your boy Volkanovsky? 
you know, <laughs> that would be wild. Um, but yeah, whatever you guys do, like if you are a real fan, oh, that's what I've been meaning to say. This is your fault, CJ. This is your fault. I'm gonna hit you back with the your fault. This no, is you and Mo's no. fault. Hey, you and Mo, no, watch no, because I was gonna tell you, I was gonna you say it's your fault. fault. You posted that damn video about no women being subbed. I was about to say it's she your fault. She could have subbed. She could have subbed. this is your fault, and you know it because on the last pod I said. You said that you that y'all watch like one Valentina fight or something, and y'all know you're not supposed to do that. And I said, "Oh hell, go back and watch the pod." I said, "Oh hell, this is you and Mo's fault." You know what it was? You know what it was? Because I posted that TikTok. <laughs> yeah. I posted that TikTok. Can't do that. Shit. Don't do it. I to guess. Max. But look, Don't do okay. It to no, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Hell no. Nah. Fuck Leave no. People alone. been tripping about Max too. I'm like, y'all better not disrespect my man's like that. Listen, I. I block somebody so quick. It's not. It's not funny. Don't don't do it. Like if I could block Jason in real life, I would because he's really been annoying me. Like and he he likes Max Holloway, but he's going he do it on get, purpose. Yeah, just to rile me up. Like big bro shit. Yeah, and it's really annoying. Uh, let's get into the main event. For me, right after the emotions and excitement of Alexa Grasso, this John Jones fight. Felt like premature ejaculation. It was anticlimactic to say the least. It it was too fast. I, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Yeah, that's what she said. Literally, what you, what you feel, Jace? How you feel about? Well, I guess we got to talk up to the lead up before we get to the fight. I don't want to take nobody's spot. So, did you guys watch all the embedded and all of that shit? Did you watch him, Jace? Yeah. So, can we talk about how JJ is getting a whole new, um, like a whole new identity? How they just trying to wash him up? You know, it's like, bro, I'm bro's gonna... like kissing babies, <laughs> talking to little white kids, hugging old ladies and shit, but carrying Listen puppies. It's like, damn. I think the most interesting thing for me on the embedded show is like, I didn't know John Jones had black friends. And they just make it seem like he was out there in the streets with n niggas. Niggas. Like, this is not. Mm, I've heard John Jones talk. Mm, this is not John Jones. But they literally tried to say like he was just a, another nigga. Um, yeah, I don't know. That was the biggest. Like I literally on every embedded, I just kept thinking about that. And then I also think about like how offended. John Jones was when DC said nigga at the press conference, you know. It's like, oh my God, you called me the N bomb. Like, Don't you say nigga? N bomb. Oh, yeah. This is probably the first time in months that I didn't get a chance to watch any of the embedded. I watched the first episode. I was so busy at work and just had so much shit that I had going on. I didn't get a chance to watch the embedded. So, and I didn't watch Countdown. Like it's it's been a while. Um, the Countdown was fire, but the embedded was the John Jones show for show. Hey, they know they you know what I'm saying. Daddy's home. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Ah. So, go ahead. Well, how you feel about the fight, Jace? You know, I'm sorry to. Uh, cut everybody off and shit. Uh, I mean, I guess to keep it 1,000, I don't really know what I can feel about it. I mean, it, it was such a small sample exactly. size that, like, I don't – like, it's kind of almost how we were talking earlier about Bo. You know, yep. like, I, like, don't have a sample size to really compute. You know, like, I don't think John Jones took a punch in the fight. He didn't. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? So can he still take a punch from a heavyweight? I don't know. I mean, for, for me, that was one of the biggest questions I had with John Jones moving up. Can this dude take that major league heat? You know what I mean? Uh, there's a reason why a lot of people stay in AAA. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, like I think that the um, what John said became true. The moment was just too big for serial gone. You know what yes. I mean? Or should I say serial gain? Because um, he just looked frozen. He looked soft. He looked he just... Didn't really know. Look like a deer in headlights. You know what I'm Reminiscent saying? Reminiscent of Anthony Lionheart Smith. When 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 he got inside there with John, go back and look at that fight. His eyes were like, he was not comfortable in there with John. Worst nickname ever. Lionheart my ass. <laughs> hey, he stayed in there. He got illegally need and stayed in the fight. He has Lionheart. Worst life choice ever. Hey, you should have took that belt. 
Should have did that Matt Hamill on him. Hey, hey, we can um, run it back, but I'm gonna go ahead and get my pay per view points. <laughs> uh, what Sweet I was love. gonna say, you do you guys feel like Gone is gonna have that John Jones curse where shit just goes downhill for him now, or is oh, you think God. he's gonna be okay? He gonna uh, end think, up like Reyes. <laughs> I think he'll be okay. Yeah, I just because the the heavyweight division is so weak. As long as he stay away from fucking Dolph. Mr. I will I will crush the American. He'd be all right. From uh uh Sergey, uh, which Sergei one? Sergey uh, Popovich. Uh, Pavlovich. Yeah, yeah, yeah the scariest. The, the one the who knocks people bear. out. The polar bear. Yeah, as long as he stays away from that dude, he'd be all right. Yeah. So John Jones versus Stipe, International Fight Week. That's what they're aiming for. Um, gonna tell you right now. As as the old Jace would say, bet the house. On John Jones. <laughs> so I don't know if you remember, like, one of the first pods I was on. I said that we were talking about John. I was like, I want him to fight Steve. And you're like, Steve yeah. ain't ready for he not whatever. But I just wanted to fight him because he's Steve is not one of the bigger heavyweights. He's a smaller in size. So I'm like, all right, John, come get that taste at a uh, heavyweight. Someone that's kind of equal in size. Um, But going back to John. I, I man, he looked weird out there, and that's with that size on him. It, it looked, he looked. It was shocking to see him when you're yeah. used to seeing him at 205, super athletic. So seeing him so big and awkward looking, it it threw me off. It was uh, almost like seeing 50 Cent at the Super Bowl. Yeah, when he was hanging. Yeah, it was like yeah. this is not what I grew up watching. <laughs> we ain't in, we ain't in the club no more. Hell <laughs> no. Nah. We at the lounges now. You know. <laughs> Yeah. And another uh, thing, another point we were talking about last week. Remember, we were talking about how Jordan's a winner, Kobe's a winner, Tom Brady's a winner. John Jones, JJ has that dog. He has that monster. He is a killer and he's a winner. Period. Gone is a nice guy. He's a playful big dude. He's he the... went out, he just didn't have it. As much as I like him as a person, yeah, he's that. He's a big puppy. He's a big puppy. Yeah. But you know what? He was really hurt and disappointed in himself. Like he went to the post fight and he was saying how upset and angry he was. And you know, sometimes you need something like that to shake something up inside of you to where you like, hey, now maybe he'll start training every fucking day like he should be and not just training when he's got to fight. Maybe now, you know, (sighs) I was telling Jace this. Maybe his coach, um, the French guy, the black guy. Fernand uh, or something. Yeah, Fernand or whatever his name is. Maybe he's just really good at finding the talent, but not really cultivating it. Maybe mm. he needs to go somewhere else and learn something new. You got, We got to remember, Cyril's still a baby in the sport. He's only been training MMA for like the last four years. Like he's still very, very much new to this. He might need to go somewhere, get some other looks, do some other things. Hopefully this will motivate him to like really – push himself to do mm. what he has to do um but i think he still he still has plenty of time he mm-hmm. doesn't have any miles on him he can still john jones isn't going to be like in the heavyweight division for years to come so i mean he could be back up there way too early prediction stipe gets it done way Stop too early it. prediction stipe stipe listen you uh, wait, wait, wait. Gets it done. Black you dog. said Cyril Gaon was going to finish him. You Is that what he it. said? Y'all don't remember that? Don't recall no, because was, he was in on the pile when he was saying that no, bullshit. Don't recall he was. That. was I he? A video on TikTok. I'm about to pull it up right now. Please run it back. Said, Please run it back. That. <laughs> Running it all. I don't. Back. I don't recall that being my final prediction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you're yeah, right. And I was like, we'll give him a week or whatever. He did say that. We'll like we'll yeah. talk about it. See, I had on. to. I had to. Play to it right now. I had to consult the Elder Scrolls. Cyril Gaon, worst case scenario for John Jones. A That's guy who moves, a guy that has power. I'm going to say it now, early prediction. Cyril gets the job done, and he finishes him. Whoa, hot take. <laughs> Whoa, hot take. <laughs> Cyril gets the job done, and he finishes him. That coming hey. out of Jace's mouth. That's God. why uh, Jace's office here instead of Jace. Hey, he been fucking up a lot this year, 2023. <laughs> the curse is over. The curse is over. 
Uh, hell no. Nah. Nah. He's been back to 100%. It. The King He's of wild. Kings is back. Your boy is wild out here. <laughs> the King of Kings is back. <laughs> He's twirling in costume. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, she had the receipts like a boss. <laughs> okay, Ariel. <laughs> yeah. It's in the Ari Hawani show. Stop it. Hey, and she played it back on the pod. <laughs> nigga. Nigga. Help me. You got to. You got to. Oh, you know man. What? Jason will try to skate past some shit real fast. Real yeah. fast. Skate past some shit. He's like, hey. Hey, man. Uh, hey, no. You know, it, it's all love. We, we've all been wrong, you know. Fuck okay. it. Um, yeah, man. Oh, man. I'm, I'll talk to you later, Scott. People be tripping, but you know how it go. Yeah, on TikTok as well. Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you guys have not already, make sure that you guys go. Join. Um, get If you guys are on TikTok, go check out Scrap and Roll MMA. Go check out MMA Casual 619. Um, he's almost at 5K. Like, I think a couple weeks ago, we were just talking about you hadn't even hit 1K. Now you at mm-hmm. uh, now you at 1K. Now you're almost at 5 Um yeah, he's creating a nice little community going live over there. Um, so y'all can always go inside there and tap in. Don't go on that bullshit though, because he never come on that bullshit. Because I'll just be on some peace and love. Don't be coming over here with that bullshit because I'm grown. I ain't gonna block you, and I'll get the roasting back though if you tripping. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so for me, I, I think you know, good for John Jones. He came in, he got it done. We were able to see him, um, compete. I think. You guys think Stipe gives him a problem? Hundred yeah, percent. What do you think, I was TJ? Gonna, I was gonna say the thing that's crazy about JJ right now. He won the championship at twenty three, right? Bro mm-hmm. is thirty five right now. Mm-hmm. He's literally about to start hitting his peak of his body, like his like his athleticism. You know, men start peaking at like thirty five in the athletics. Yeah, and I think. I think he's gonna learn from this fight that he looked kind of crazy out there. I think he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna carry the weight, but I think he's gonna slim it down. And the thing that's good about John, I think he's big enough that he can tailor himself to these fights now. So if he yeah. wants to put on more weight for a certain fighter, he can do that. If he wants to slim down for a certain fighter, he can do that. And he's he's more athletic than all of these fighters there, you know. So let, let's see what happens. Let's this shit. It's Anything can happen. It's so, nobody uh, yeah. safe. Nobody safe. Nobody is can safe. Catch it. Like unless you Habib and you just like, all right, bro, I'm gonna take my 29 and 0 and go. Peace out. Hey, <laughs> y- y'all can get it. Uh, real quick before we wrap up, let's just take a look at this upcoming card. Um, Next for week. you guys that hate the Apex, it's not at the Apex. It's at the uh, theater at the Virgin Hotel here in Vegas, um, which only holds like 4,500 people. So it's gonna be nice and uh, small. Also, I'm gonna be there on the 14th to watch PFL. Um, so that'd be cool. Of uh, this month? April. Next month. Yeah, yeah, March yeah. April. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, we got... look, looks like I'll be be uh, in Kansas City watching the Bless Express. You are? You're going to go on the 15th? Choo, choo. Hey, don't you go in there on that bullshit. Don't you go inside there. <laughs> don't you. I will not talk to you. I'm not playing. I, don't, I, don't know what... I thought it, don't you go <laughs> What are you, butter, don't you go in I'm, there on that bush? I'm perplexed. What what are you referring to? Talk about I'm Max. To you going inside there and talking crazy. <laughs> don't you Max. go in there on that bullshit. <laughs> Damn. I'm playing. Hey, this guy. Like, that's what I said too, because I'm going to the fights in May. I was like, bro, I hope I'm not the one that's the one that fucks up DJ because I'm in here, bro. I'm yeah, like, bro, I would be it. so sad. Don't I would be it. so sad, bro. Like, fuck. Right. The first time on, on American turf. Oh, <laughs> I know. Don't, bro. Please. Come on, DJ. And you know what's crazy is they got this channel. Um, it's it's some app that's on our TV. I don't know. Danny be finding these different little apps on the TV. I come out the other day, and she's like, oh, my God, Korean Zombie versus Dustin Poirier. I didn't know that De- that uh, Korean Zombie was this good. I mean, she was really in here legitimately watching UFC fights. Like, it plays, like, all these old UFC fights. Oh, that's fire, sitting yeah. there watching it. Like, um, Gonzaga versus Crow Cop came on, and I'm just like. Oh, oh that's God. horrible. I know. That was horrible. <laughs> he put his ass yeah. to sleep. Yes, yes, you know. Um, 
I don't even know why I brought that up. Because it's just like, you know, just like random fights. And like, so it's good. Like when people who casually watch get an opportunity to, to sit and uh, see some fights. Uh, Jace's guy, Peter Yam versus Marab Dwalisvili. I'm not going to even try to say it again. That's what, that's what we're going the with. Vili. Who y'all got? Vili. Who y'all got? The machine Caesar? versus the machine, pretty much. I I think Marab probably going to win. But, like, not, like, because he's going to go out there and, like, put on a show. He probably just going to grab his legs and just hold him on the cage and shit. <laughs> not like he's going to put on the show. So, and if he does win, that's be, that'll be wild for Jan, bro. He'll be, what, one in three or four? <laughs> <laughs> that'll suck. So, I kind of, he needs to win. Uh, Y'all he needs does that need win. to win. He needs that win. You know, he's coming. Yeah, he's lost his last three. Uh, one due to the illegal knee. The other one due to just getting out grappled. And then um, the fight with Sean O'Malley. Um, who you going with, Jace? <laughs> <laughs> Peter Yawn. Yeah. Um, if I had to choose, I... I I find it hard to go against Jan. Yeah, um, I feel I feel what you're saying. But I feel like Marab's gonna get it done because just that momentum. Like sometimes when you start losing, you know, that momentum takes over, and he's already going into it feeling like you know he got robbed in the Sean fight, feeling like he, he got robbed in the. He did not get robbed. Come on, he got he, robbed. It was not a robbery. We're not gonna play. It was a close fight, but it was not a robbery. I just watched I was that aghast. fight the other day too. I was aghast by. The outcome. Well, and, me and uh, if you're on like a losing streak or a winning streak kind of stuff, these kind of fighters like Marab are the worst kind of fighters to fight because they will not let you do what you want to do exactly. to win. You know, they that's fucking sucks. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see now because Marab is a wrestler, wrestler. You know, uh, how Pete, uh, Peter wrestles Sean O'Malley well because Sean's not a wrestler. Um, and I think I'm pretty sure he'll be able like to hold his own, but I I just oh, yeah. I mean, I'd like to see Peter win. I I, I would. I, I'd like to see him win. Um, because I'd like to see him fight somebody else again that's up there. Um, in that top. Let's see. He's 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 number two, and they got Marab at number three. You know, if Marab wins, I mean, if Marab wins, it doesn't really make sense because Aljo's not gonna fight him. Mm -hmm. Uh, if Peter wins, he can't really fight Aljo again because, you know, then they don't really know what's going on with Cejudo and Aljo. And then Sean O'Malley was tweeting that he's getting ready for the fight for May 6th. So there's a lot going on just like in that division right now. But, uh, it should, hopefully it's a good fight. I, I don't think it will be, uh, Alexander Volkov versus Alexander Romanov. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the rest of the card is what it is. We're not going to... Uh, Ryan Spann is back. Ryan Spann. Yeah. Because uh, Nikita, I guess Nikita's feeling better. Yeah, he had the boo-boo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not a uh, yogi, but a boo-boo. He, he, he didn't want to go out like uh, Yoel Romero. Mm. Y'all see that video? Disgusting. Oh, you ain't never seen a video of Yoel with the dookie uh, in, in the octagon? I don't think I remember that. I remember <laughs> that. I remember. I remember that girl shitting on herself. That's in Bellator right now. What? Yeah, the one that just beat Elim eliminate uh, not too long ago. Yeah. Oh. Uh, something Kirsch, Kish. I'm gonna have to check that out. And I didn't hear about that. Um, yeah. his wasn't super egregious. It's like you can't really tell, but like all of a sudden, there's when he starts the fight, there's no brown spot, and then like second round. There's this mysterious brown spot. They try to mm. say it's water. I'm like, nah. He trusted himself a little too much. Yeah. Is the water from Flint, Michigan? I mean. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is uh, the last day that I'll be doing the pod in this current house. So after this, I'll be tearing everything down. Uh, but we will still be back next week because we got to do it. Um, and we'll go over, we'll take a look at the fights. Hopefully, you know, this could be a sleeper card. This could be the one. Yeah. We don't know. Banger. Also, I know most of you guys hate uh, Power Slap, but Power Slap is having their finale 
this uh, Saturday as well, says the guy that was wearing the power slap jersey. <laughs> Before we go to yeah. uh, my homeboy, shout out to my homeboy, Dame. He laced me up and said that Bellator is coming on this Friday. Hendo mm. is fighting Nurmagomedov this Friday. Omar. Oh, that's this Friday. Omar. The Bellator card, the start of the... um. The tournament. Uh, the tournament. Yeah. 155 tournament. That. Omar. That's how well Bellator markets their stuff. Mm. <laughs> exactly. You got the uh, guy, Benson. Like, come on, bro. Hey, <laughs> MVP's, still, on, MVPs on that card and nobody knows. Really? They still got him with the damn soul glow. And bro no, don't no. even braid his hair. Like, bro, he'll be having hair all in his face. Like, come on, man. Braid that shit up. Y'all know... Uh... Umar's gonna take that though, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know if we were gonna pretend like uh <laughs> you know who I'm but, going for though. Hey, I know who you going for, but hey, like CJ said, anybody got a chance. It's a mm. fight. It's a fight. Okay, I see MVPs on there. That should be good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that CJ will be texting me like, hey, Bellator's on. <laughs> Shit, one FC uh, might be on that day too. Shit. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they they've been coming on every Friday the past couple weekends, past really? couple weeks. Yeah, but I'm okay with one FC, like, not always everyone, like, pretty much knowing when they're on because they're not based here in the U.S. That's not their number one market, it's a market they're trying to get into, but it's yeah. not their number one market for Bellator. Egregious, you know yeah. what I mean? That, that, that makes literally no sense at all. That, like, us an MMA show with diverse community, you know what I mean? Like it's not come up in, in my feeds. Like it should be shoved down our throat. Not to mention, yes, I mean, their yes, parent yes. company is fucking CBS. No excuses. You know what I mean? One, you're on Prime Video. I get it. All your stuff is based in China or sorry, Japan. Awkward hours. Understandable. No hate in the heart. But they do a better job. They do a way better job marketing their fighters as well. They social sure. media is lit. Yeah, they be turned up. They be turned up. But yeah. go ahead, do your outro, Sky. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, but either way, we are out of here. Make sure that you guys come back next week. And if you're watching this, the Amanda Nunes documentary is already out, so make sure you check that out. And uh, yeah, we got more and more coming to the page. But for today, we're out. Peace. Peace.